Hello. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Blue Innovation Doc. Thank you for joining, and also thank you for all the online um, people who are watching today. Uh, today, we are going to talk about um, innovation for sustainability. So uh, we have all these software uh, experts with some amazing technology that we're going to talk about today and maybe even show you a few things today. Um, my name is Anouk Grun. I am uh, a designer, but I'm also the moderator for today. So I probably will t move a lot of the discussion back to what's it made of, what does it look like, how, how can you communicate better visually, since I'm very visual. Um, and um, what I would like to do is just start by, uh, first of all, thanking all the guys here for their technical um, expertise. And uh, we will start. I'm going to introduce you to the panelists. Uh, the first person we have is Bjorn Jonsson. He is the CEO. Welcome to the stage. CEO and co-founder of Heffring Marine. Marine, and um, you're based in Iceland, right? Yes, yeah, based okay. in Iceland. Okay, cool. Uh, then we have Eden Cohen. He is the president and chairman of the Marine Innovation Association and the Smart Marina Working Group. Welcome. Next we have Patrick Heibig. Patrick... Um, he is the sales manager of CAI, which is a really cool technology, and previously worked for Adidas. And you studied in Marseille. Yes. Or no, in uh, Aix-en-Provence. Correct. Where I'm currently living, so. <laughs> uh, then uh, we have Yannick uh, Fer... Sorry, your last name. <laughs> well, how do you say it? Verreestraten. Yeah. Is, it, is it Belgian? Is it Belgian, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is. I should be able to say that because I'm from Holland. <laughs> um, okay, he is co founder and CEO of SalesSense Analytics. And uh, finally, we have Clément Douet, which I can say because it's Francais. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, welcome, bienvenue. Uh, Clément is the VP of Digital Business for the Beneteau Group. All right, welcome. Uh, what I would like to do is, um, I think, start with you, Clément, and work down the line. Uh, if you could just introduce yourself or, or your, uh, and what you, what you do, and maybe some impressions you already have of the show, and what you're go doing in terms of technology and sustainability. Just two minutes, quickly. Yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm Clément Douai, I'm from uh, Group Beneteau. I'm in charge of uh, the digital solution we deploy once we produce the boat. Uh, so more on usage. Uh, we have two products today. We have uh, one marketplace for to sell and buy used boats as we want to uh, get more sustainable boats in the future and to have uh, a, third, uh, a second life, a third life, a fourth life for every boat we produce. And it's called Band of Boats. And we also have a, a connected boat solution called Synapse that we deploy on all the new boats we produce and that we can also put on the on, on used boat to, to help the customer uh, have an access to his boat remotely and to collect data and usage to, to improve the repairability of the boat. Good. And um, have you been at the show the whole... Yeah, it's been a long time? week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of meetings. Uh, the... the my job dur during this, 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 this boot was, was to meet with dealers. Okay. Uh, because as we are deploying the system, which is connected, both owners, dealers, and brands, uh, we needed to, to get time with the dealers to yeah. explain the solution and to explain And are you how getting to a lot of traffic, a lot of people? Lots of people. Okay. Kubernetes, okay. we have uh, here uh, something like eight or ten booths, so lots of people are coming. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, then we have, um, sorry, I just have to look at my notes. Why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> I know you have the difficult last name. <laughs> so my name is uh, Yannick Verheer-Straten. Yes, Yannick. Um, I'm the co-founder of a company called SalesSense, and I'm also the CEO of this company. 
Um, at SalesSense, we, we developed a full ecosystem of solutions uh, for the boating industry, so for boat manufacturers, uh, boat owners, but also fleet operators, to digitize uh, their experience for the boat and to simplify the way a boat is operated. So we've got solutions to um, optimize the, the energy management on board of the boat and to simplify it for, for the user. Uh, and we've got a whole set of um, tools to help the person on board to have a better experience uh, to better manage the boat and to get advices while he uh, is sailing uh, to, to really simplify his experience. Okay. Now, regarding the boat show, I must say I'm, I'm very grateful to be here today. Uh, thank yeah. you very much for, uh, for the invitation. Um, the boat show was, was amazing. Um, spent the whole week walking from one end to the other, meeting people all the time, so thank you very much for that. Yeah. Do you have a stand? or? We do have a stand, yeah, we have that. Okay, where is it? Um, I would need some uh, help for that. It's okay. <laughs> voilà. S S Hall 10? Oh, so it's here. Yeah. Okay, great. 1006. Okay. Patrick? Hi. Yes, uh, my name is Patrick. I um, work for the companies called CAI. Um, we are doing automatic object detection at sea. Do you want us to run a little video? Yeah, um, I think that's good because it would be easier to understand. Um, so we use thermal and color cameras and um, obviously looking out on the ocean surface. And with the help of an artificial intelligence, we can actually um, um, detect and classify objects as well as estimate the distance to them. So of course, primarily used as a collision avoidance system. You can set alarms and ranges, and, uh, and, and yeah, that's what we do. We also have a booth here in Hall 10, and I invite you to have a look at the systems afterwards, because they are fairly small, and the feedback, the first feedback of customers is, oh, it's that small. Yeah. Because they are literally, the smallest just units are like... You just attach it to your boat, to yeah. any boat. So we have uh, multiple systems. Um, we started in ocean racing sailing. There's the smallest systems. They're barely like one and a half fists. And then there is different units for cruising sailboats. And um, now we have also a unit that is heavily used in, in, in everything that is motorized, I would say. Yeah. So recreational motorboats, super yachts, but also more and more in the governmental sector, search and rescue teams, police boats, tug vessels. Yeah, yeah. really cool. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Idan Cohen. Idan, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to start the, the video or present myself? Yeah, briefly? so we'll just do a quick video to show. Maybe you just tell yeah, who so you are. My name is Idan Cohen. I'm one of the founders of a company called Picapier. Picapier is a marketplace connecting marinas and boaters on a digital platform that enable um, sustainability, profitability, and uh, the best customer experience for the marina business. I'm also a president of something called um, MIA, IMIA, um, Israeli Marine Innovation Association, which is a full member in ICOMIA that is in charge about the discussion, uh, the working group on smart marinas, and it is the nexus between the innovation and sustainability. Um, so Can I just stop you for a sec? Would it be possible to turn the sound on? It's on? Having foresight and an oh. up-to-date picture of their current utilization okay. is crucial for marinas to operate sustainably. With Pickup here, marinas are instantly optimizing their operation and unlocking space to accommodate more boaters. We connect marinas and boaters in real time on an intuitive platform, introducing new levels of transparency, communication, and profitability. Our AI-powered solution is constantly evolving with the industry to meet the needs of tomorrow. We are introducing new standards for the industry and allowing it to make more without tapping new coastline resources. We're helping governments, communities, and organizations protect the ocean. We're on track to reclaim tens of thousands of underutilized berthing opportunities, thus eliminating the need for hundreds of new marinas. Driving a sustainable revolution doesn't end with marinas. In partnership with Blue Flag, we ask all of our boaters to take the Sustainable Boating Pledge and adhere to simple but effective eco-friendly practices at sea and on shore. We make sure every voyage with Pickup Here has the lowest possible footprint on the environment. With Pickup Here, more people are sailing better and ensuring a thriving ocean for generations to come. And we're just getting started. That's it? Okay. It's, it started from the middle. Maybe I'll just say the, the beginning of it and, and the concept of building that company. 
uh, what we see is uh, growth in the entire boating industry. We have new generation of boaters. We have uh, um, um, uh, new buyers uh, for the industry, new boats that are generated, and the fact that uh, coastline is became limited in capacity of building more marinas. So what we see is that the supply of berthing spots become a challenge. By and by utilizing existing resources, we're able to unlock opportunities and actually save the environment because uh, the solution that or the, one of the ways to solve it today in the discussion is to build more marinas. And we try to utilize existing resources. Uh, this is what we do. But so, uh, of course, from the video, I saw that it's, it's being more economical with space. Absolutely. Um, but, but how do you convince a, a marina to do that? So, so there are a few things here. On, on pick up level, level, um, our partnership with Blue Flag is um, actually working with their customers, with their boaters, uh, to sign on a code of conduct. So one of the things that we have done, we reduce the bar to sign on a code of conduct. Instead of saying, I will never use plastic, we say, I'll try to do my best on one, two, three, four. So it goes to the education phase of customers. Okay. They are incentivized to do a sustainability move in order to get this within Blue Flag Marinas. Blue Flag is an, um, it's an eco label for 750 marinas. So we actually find an incentive for the marinas to move to digital and also to boaters to go to a digital experience by uh, saving the environment as well. On the industry level, I would say, that it, was, it is still a challenge to how we can um, encourage marinas to become more uh, digital uh, because of that understanding that Digitally, um, digital marinas, it means that it's more sustainable marinas because yeah. once they are enabled to measure, they are become much more efficient in their operations. So this is one of the discussions that we do on the industry level and these are the challenges today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Bjorn? Yes, um, my name is Bjorn Jonsson. I'm the co-founder of uh, Hefling Marine out of Iceland. And uh, our focus is on um, uh, speed guidance um, in order to improve fuel efficiency for motorboats. Um, and um, we, we started this project uh, a few years back. It started as a research project, uh, then led to, to the development of our system, which we refer to as IMAS, which is Intelligent Marine Assistant System. Um, and uh, we we have been focusing on, um, like, like some of my co-panelists here, on, on commercial search and rescue, law enforcement, navies. Um, but this was the ideal event for us to look into the recreational boating market, because obviously there is uh, room for improvement in uh, fuel efficiency there as well. Um, and and um, we will maybe go into that a little bit later, but yeah. we have collected a lot of data where we can see uh, where there is room for improvement in efficiency and CO2 emission reduction. So that's our focus. But if, if I have to visualize your product, it's also something, it's like a, a software that you can use on board. Yes, it's, it's a software that actually uh, interacts with being at Garmin, Raymarine, Simrad, or any other display. Yeah. And it provides the operator on board uh, with um, an easy to use display and a dynamic speed that he or she should be doing given the conditions where the boat is being operated. So and also the like the, with the waves and yeah. the currents, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. But do you have to then put, sorry, I could go into detail, sensors under the boat to uh, to. Yeah, that? so we place a sensor uh, oh, okay. on the boat and yeah. then a processing unit. Yeah. And it's, it's easy to install, it's a, yeah. a, it's a simple process. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think we start with the questions. Uh, for Clément, your question is, in a large company like, like yours, I mean, um, is a, a digital first approach being in implemented? Well, of course, you're, that's your work. <laughs> for, for, for sustainability, you can see now the, the impact today because we are working with new materials. We are, we are having a huge impact uh, on sustainability and you can see just right now, but everything began <laughs> a few years ago. A uh, few years ago, we decided that we didn't want to be a, a pen and paper company anymore. So we work on the, on the boat life cycle. So for us, there is, there is four, four, four cycles uh, for, for, for the whole life of the boat. First is uh, obviously uh, taking out the materials. Then production for us, it's quite important. Then we, you have the usage and the end of the boat life. Yeah. Um, so 
you got Erwan Faucher from uh, from our company uh, in, in in one uh, in one panel panel table. Uh, I think it was Wednesday. Yes. Talk about uh, the new material we use and, and, and all what we've done with sustainability. So they work with an IT company called Evia to digitalize all our uh, data regarding suppliers. So now, if you want to work with the Group Beneteau as a supplier, we ask you to uh, send us on a regular basis data that we can collect and crunch to be sure that we use the, the best supplier and the best material in terms of reparability, in terms of sustainability. Uh, they also have to go through EcoVadis, uh, it's a digital tool to, to assess on the CSR and the sustainability and to, again, to be sure that we work with the best. Uh, the idea on that is for the, the, the first phase is finally to have data and digital tool that we can use and update uh, for the first step of the, from, from materials to board production. Yeah. And then uh, my, my team uh, arrive with, uh, with Synapse. So Synapse is something, uh, a solution that we put on every boat we produce. Uh, we've partnered with Sentinel Marine, uh, an IT company in Slovenia. Basically, it's a box with sensor on the boat that we put on every boat we produce. So 10,000 boats at the end of this year, 20,000 boats uh, at the end of 2020. That will be installed on your new boat. It's already installed, it's on, already. Every, already installed on every boat we produce. Uh, the idea is to ease the maintenance process uh, for the final customer as we get all the maintenance protocol for all supplier working with yeah. us. Uh, and again, uh, for sustainability, we want the client and the dealer to be able to repair and to maintain the boat properly to yeah. enlarge the life uh, of the boat. Um, and the, uh, the idea also is to, is to collect data on usage because it's a nice thing to have data on how we produce the boat. Yeah. But once we're going to be able to collect data on how boats are really used, because no, <laughs> when you ask people, they're all saying that they use this boat this way, but when you look at the data, it's quite different. Yeah, yeah. So the idea it's also what your impression is. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The idea of having uh, 10, 20, 30,000 boats uh, equipped uh, in the next few years is to get anonymized data and to have profile of people uh, to, to know how they use the boat and to produce boats that are better answering their needs and that uh, are going to last longer. Yeah. Just, I didn't quite understand. How do you know if a supplier is being honest with you? you know? We assess them, obviously. We, are, we assess our supplier and then we collect data on our own. Yeah, to, to but, the, but who is checking the supplier? Do you do it yourself or do you have like a, is it, do they have so, a seal? So we have external company like Ecovadis yeah. uh, that are assessing them, but we also do our job internally because okay. as we produce uh, the boats, we are testing them and we are able to, to, to check uh, every part yeah. we put on the boat. So. And are you also visit the factory? Do you? Uh yeah, we have a okay. whole team of, uh, of buyers okay. internally, uh, managed by Delphine Planes, uh, and we also have the, we also have the, 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 the supply chain <laughs> They got a lot of work recently yeah. <laughs> with all the supply uh, issue we got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, they have them. But I think it'll be so fascinating once you get the data to be able to. So on production, we already yeah. have it. Uh, okay. the, the we used to do it on pen and paper. Yeah. Now we have uh, data actualized uh, on a daily basis, and we are we're getting more and more data. Yeah. So the good thing is. We have more and more information. The, the bad thing, we have, to, we have to stay humble because the more we know, the more we realize that we don't know a lot. So, so we need to have more and more data to be, to be more accurate. But uh, we've done a lot, and we also realize that we have a long way to go. Yeah. And just in, in, since yesterday, we were talking a lot about sharing economy. Would you, uh, would you share that technology with like a competitor just so that they can also become more sustainable? Since so you're that, that's also why we, we, we partner with external companies. Okay. Uh, so Ecovadis is, a, is a, a, an external company that is certified, so yeah. they, are, they are happy to work with other companies. And for okay. Synapse, we partner with Sentinel Marine. Uh, they are also equipping uh, Answerboat. Answer they're also partnering with uh, Honda. 
Okay. So for us, it's it's gold because the more people are getting on board, the better the, the product. The, the better the product is, yeah. and the, the 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 better the industry as a whole is going yeah. to is going to be more yeah. sustainable on on, okay. on production yeah. and on uh, on usage. Well, nice that you are open to sharing. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, Yannick, um, for you, um, how can digitalization help reduce? In, uh, the environmental impact from boats, especially older boats. I don't know if that's your specialty. And can software be used to encourage more sustainable behavior from boaters? So, so currently, um, there are millions of boats uh, out there, uh, I mean, recreational boats out there uh, in the sea. Uh, most of these boats have been produced in the last uh, 5, 10, 20, up to 40 years. Yeah. And, and these boats actually pose... Um, um, ecological challenge at some point in time. Uh, of course, at the end of the life cycle of the boat, we will need to find solutions to recycle these boats. Um, and that's a topic that has been discussed uh, several times, I guess, in the panels over the last days. But during the life cycle of the boat, that's where digitization uh, can, can help. Uh, these boats, uh, they consume power, uh, they consume gas, they, they go around. Uh, and that's where with, with digitization, I think there are three main axes where uh, there are the solutions that, that can uh, help reducing uh, the overconsumption and the, and the global footprint of, of boats in general. Um, to me, the, the first axis uh, that digitization can help with is about data collection, yeah. by putting sensors on board of boats, uh, by um, measuring exactly how the boats are used in the different parts of the world, which, uh, which system on board of the boat is consuming energy. Um, if, if you take an example, you don't have the same energy consumption pattern for a boat uh, that is used in France, rather uh, compared to a boat which is used uh, in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, you will have more airco uh, on board, and that is the system that will consume more. Whereas in other parts of the globe, it will be more the engine. So by trying to quantify that information, trying to understand which system consumes more, um, then you can actually start acting on those. So you can prioritize and identify uh, which, um, which are the main drivers for, uh, for yeah, fuel consumption uh, and for... Uh, but so a boat owner has to voluntarily um, put, this, put these sensors on their boat, right? Yes, absolutely, so, yes. But how do you convince them? Because they might be like, well, we don't want to know because it's going to cost us money or... Yeah, and that's why we have to work with the boat manufacturers. So okay. typically, initiative wha like uh, what uh, Group Beneteau is doing to equip boat with sensors. So there's other initiatives like that on the market. We also have this kind of initiatives yeah. with other uh, boat manufacturers. Um, and that's why collecting those data from, uh, I mean, from the moment the boat uh, is leaving the factory with those sensors, yeah. that simplifies a lot. And uh, with an older boat? And with all, all the boats, uh, there's also a possibility to add uh, kind of a bag boat a like after that. Like what if it's like a 30-year-old boat, you know, or... But it also makes sense uh, yeah. to have that because then you start uh, measuring uh, all the data. Um, if, I, if I may, because I know Setsen, they're doing a very good job and, and, and the client wants to do it. Okay, because so it, even the ones with the older boat. Yeah, it's not only for, uh, you the know, it's not only to collect data uh, with the Setsen solution and, yeah. and the Synapse solution. The client, the client is happy because he can remotely know how the boat is going, it yeah. can, it can uh, have access to sensor and to be sure that the boat is perfectly maintained. So for him, it's, uh, it's saving time, so that's huge value for him. Yeah. He can remotely control the boat, so the huge value for, for, for him also. So, you know, uh, SailSense is also equipping a lot of used boats because uh, the final customers see value in it. Uh, yeah. we, we have to stop saying that uh, uh, it's only collecting data uh, against the consumer. It's yeah. They want to do it because there is value it's for also them. It's also to help the consumer. Yeah. And it's, I and mean, it'll save money if you can drive more efficiently. Exactly. You know. And in the end, that's what counts. It's a value we are able to create for the owner yeah. of the boat or the people managing the boat. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you convince them to have these kind of systems on yeah. board. Um, well, it seems a bit of a challenge, but... Uh, we, we do have... I don't uh, think everybody security. wants to know. <laughs> Not everybody wants to know. Yeah. But I think yeah, they have to. Yeah. To, to have an impact, you, you also, I mean, there's no need to equip all the boats on the planet. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you have a um, number of boats which is big enough, uh, then you can also have big uh, trends and you can analyze the data and really have a good recommendation uh, yeah. for that. Actually, you pass uh, then on to boat manufacturers 
to optimize the new boats that will be built in, uh, in the next years. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, next, next to that, um, of course, um, capturing the data is, is uh, one thing, but we also have systems uh, where you can actually act on the boat, and a smart system. So we try to bring intelligence to the boat so that the boat becomes uh, smarter, and the boat uh, itself can take decisions to optimize the consumption of the boat. By but that could only be on a new boat. You can't really do that on an older... It can be a new boat. It can also be... We can also retrofit uh, okay. all the boats. It's a bit more complex, but in the end, uh, there's value for the boat yeah. owner over there, too. And it kind of makes you question why didn't they do this 10 years ago, but why, it didn't why, why didn't this uh, type of technology to, that you know how efficient your motor is why, is, why wasn't that already 10 years ago? I think the, the technology evolves uh, super rapidly over the last 5 to 10 years. Really? Okay. Um, you are able now to do things on a boat in a very small device, uh, which is 10 times, so I mean 100 times more powerful than what you could that do it in was the past. Before, yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, similarly, uh, you also have a, a technology that you can add to a boat, to an older boat or a, or a newer boat. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, your, uh, your question is more about uh, using safety for sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah of course, big topic is safety. Um, I, I mentioned collision avoidance um, when in, in my intro. Um, there is, of course, numerous other aspects that we at the beginning maybe didn't even look at but um, I think we, we we are very confident to de detect anything that is not visible by any sensors that have been out there before so of course we all know sonar systems we know radar we know AIS and still there's a lot floating around that um, those systems cannot see or pick up um, we are confident to, for example, just to give you a, a rough estimate, to see a human person uh, in the water at about 700 meters day and night. Um, and we can even classify it as a human being that is swimming there, which is nice. But for example, we, uh, if we think about animals, we, we are quite um, um, sure also to detect anything from a whale to a dolphin. Um, we detect very small craft that uh, might be out of wood um, and uh, that is fishing somewhere near the African coast with no lights on, there is no AIS on, so there's no chance for the other boat to actually see it yeah. and you would run over it. Yeah. Uh, so these, these are the things that we have in mind. But of course, with time, and we've been on the market now since about five years only, so also quite new, and I think um, the same question applies to us as well. Yeah. Why didn't it exist years ago? Yeah, why didn't, why didn't ago? this exist before? Yeah, it didn't exist because thermal cameras have, have been there before already. But the big difference is if you have an automatic object detection that runs via an artificial intelligence. Um, the artificial intelligence ten years ago, people could write it, but there was not a lot of systems that applied it. Yeah. And now with neural networks that have become trained already with new sensors in terms of thermal but also color that gets smaller and smaller and more performant, it's, uh, it's, a, different, it's a different world. And would you, would you be interested in building in, like, let's say there's a giant piece of plastic or a mm. net floating around? Yes. Could your system then maybe alert the Coast Guard to clean it up or... Yes. I um, don't know. We, we, have, we have, for example, we have... Um, we have uh, the first customers that we had actually were ocean racers. And ocean racers, if there's not so much wind, they are of course interested not to go into a region where there might be a lot of seaweed swimming. Okay. As a person on deck level, you can't really identify seaweed from far away. A thermal camera can. Okay. And uh, so it permitted them to go around them. But you could also use it in a different sense and say, okay, I mark the position of a big, because seaweed is usually mixed with doors of fridges and <laughs> plastic and whatever is floating around in our oceans at the moment. So yes, this could be a use case, of course. Yeah. So yeah. we provide interfaces also for OEMs and third parties to integrate that into other systems to fuse different information together. And so, yeah, as I said, possibilities are there. We are providing the intelligence and the system and let's see what the future brings. I yeah, would say. yeah. You would almost think 
you know, going back to the sharing, mm -hmm. that maybe if your product becomes successful, that somehow you can start sharing it with, exactly. with like Greenpeace or something yes. to let them use your technology to, to help clean up things. Yes. You know, just to, we, we had, um, and even it's like what you guys are doing, like sharing it with other boating, exactly. maybe even with competitors, but it, it because it's be for the greater good, you it know. It might be for, um, for, for Greenpeace and the, the ecological aspect. It might also be a dangerous object floating to prevent other boaters and, 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 and ships. Yeah, safety. To know where the objects are. Yeah, and if it of course they'll like move, I don't but know we can predict it. So th that's since I'm not from the boating industry, but like if it was like an oil tanker mm. heading towards a disaster. Exactly. Would this technology be able to tell them on time you need to change your course or? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, well, we are pretty confident. It wouldn't allow the ship to stop because you all know that cargo ships need, I don't know, half an hour to get to... To, to change, to, yeah. Well, to stand. But in order to just um, have a course change, altering course is something that can obviously go faster. Okay. And, and um, yes, and absolutely, we, we have installed systems uh, of ours on cargo ships already. Okay. Because of this. Yeah. Because wildlife, I mean, to be very honest, many companies, they don't mention it because they obviously don't feel it, but they know that they hit, I don't know how many things on each voyage, but now people are connected more and it's a topic that comes up more. Yeah. So they have to act now. Yeah, like how many whales did you kill? <laughs> it's going to be a hard number. <laughs> that sounds really depressing. But, uh, we would yeah. be able to count them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Very good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry, because I, I, I've become really fascinated by these, uh, you know, what else can you do with your technology? Um, let's see, we have for you, yeah, your vision of a smart marina. You've already told us uh, something about it, but... Um, like what? It, what else? Like, are you also collecting data to see if you can optimize or that kind of thing? Of course. So maybe we can like start by saying like the importance of marina in the recreational boating ecosystem because what we understand is that what is that industry without marinas? And by looking at the landscape of of, of boot and everything, we don't see. Um, Oh, we don't like show the light on, on the, like, the problems or the challenges that the marina operations have. On the international, international level, I would say about uh, what is a smart mar marina. This is a topic that we took, we adopt the word smart from an EU uh, agency work. So we define on an industry level uh, the word smart into interconnectivity and safe data collection. So what we try to do on that perspective is to understand that the interconnectivity goes within the marina and the surrounding city because it has an economical or many other impact on the surrounding city. But it's also uh, interconnectivity within different marinas so they can become uh, more interconnected to, to get a, a better uh, view of the recreational boating industry, what is actually happening. On the other end about sustainability, we understand that or like, uh, like the, it's interconnectivity and safe data collection. It's about how we collect the data in an aggregated way so we can get that picture goes along. Uh, the idea behind that is to promote sustainability, to, to promote innovation and technology through the marina business in order to drive sustainability. So what we try to say is that a marina that uses uh, technology become much more sustainable because now we are able to collect the data in an aggregated way and we can show insights about what is the, uh, the opportunities that exist. So it's like um, I, I hear these kind of different um, products and also my product as well. The idea is to try to find um, the problem of the industry, where the problem started. It's like um, uh, try to uh, solve the recycling issue with uh, waste collection. So we want to understand like the bigger picture, what is going on and what is the future heading. So we have like many boats are being sold and we see the future about like the pressure on marinas, but it will be impossible to build more marinas or it become very challenges. Uh, to do so. So we, we need to utilize what we have today. We need to work in a way that we can do much more with what we have. And this is what we try to do on the industry level, I would yeah. say. 
And um, and you already have marinas using this yes. the software, but like, w have they? What have they said that's like different from the way it was before? Like, what is something they're like? This is such an advantage that we have this. Could could you like what what would a customer yeah. say? So so it it really depends. Like uh, the the customers like there are two customers here. So once is the marina need to be. Um, interested to do so, they want to become more, like it really depends what kind of a marina, because there are different kind of marinas. There are um, um, municipality owned, governmental owned, and there are the private ones that are focusing on different kind of aspects. Yeah. So what we've learned is the fact that uh, municipality care about safety, maybe sometimes customer experience, less about profitability. So it really depends what kind of, of thing you want to achieve in that marina. This was one of the challenges to understand what is going on in the marina business. Yeah. Um, so um, what we try to, to find is marinas that are interested in um, becoming more sustainable, providing better customer experience and increased profitability. And this is easily, not easily I would say, but, but this is like, it can be start easily with digital tools to start understanding what you try to collect and how you can optimize. From, yeah. So from the marina perspective, they can see um, opportunities that they couldn't see before. They can see more utilization on the birthing spot. So even just you know, two, three birthing spots is like pure, I would say, revenue, but it's like a different spots that was not exist before. Yeah, saving space. Exactly. And on the customer experience, um, I come from Israel where we have nine marinas and all of the marinas are at full occupancy with the waiting list double the size of the marina. So on the customer experience, when you try to communicate with marinas, they always say they are full because they have no visibility about what is going on. Yeah. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that we are changing the way it works. So both are uh, enjoy the benefit of using a technology uh, and they become more sustainable yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And, and okay, thank you. Yeah. And that's why it's important uh, to connect the different solutions because if the boat is connected, if you know where the boat is located, you can share that information in real time with the marina. And would that be possible to connect that the That is completely uh, possible, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And would, would you guys work together or? We, we, <laughs> just, we just met, but, but, <laughs> we, but need to talk. we need to talk. But, but the work that we do uh, in Icomia, it's a yeah. working group of, of Smart Marina, it's exactly yeah. that. We yeah. connect uh, different kind of technology yeah. providers and also uh, representatives from different marinas in different verticals yeah. of marinas in order to build. Um, and one of the very first things is to do is to build a common language because yeah. within our industry, we don't have a, you know, a single language about even a definition of marina or other definitions. So we try to simplify it and learn from other industries how is the best thing to drive the digital uh, transformation. Yeah. And it obviously it's by connecting to a different kind of Because kind of when I saw your video, it reminded me of like the Google Maps for marinas, you know, which is, you know, everyone is using it. And the reason it works is because everyone is putting in their data. Everyone can see when I'm slowing down with the car that that is too full, that area is too congested. And um, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So and will you will you also make it for free at some point? Or <laughs> so for, for customers, uh, for customers, it's free. Oh, it is. For the okay. end user, it's, it's free. Okay. The idea is that it it is a win-win. So we okay. help marinas. Uh, so we charge for we charge marinas obviously just by the using the platform. But the idea is to uh, drive their prof profits up. So we do take cut from successful transactions. So we want to have um, to help them to bet get better and okay. it's very similar to what is exists in the tourism industry if yeah. you will be better then we can both enjoy it so yeah. we believe that marinas they now they're trying to be their own tools every marina works in a different way it's very local so yeah. we try to say listen you need to focus on customer experience and other things we yeah. take care for the technology yeah. yeah yeah so so if you're now a boat owner can you download the app for free and start using it? So yes, uh, okay. it's not an app. It's, it's on the website pickappear.com. You're invited to do so. Uh, obviously, uh, the majority of our customers come from the marina networks that we work with. So they yeah, come so from there and they're yeah. using it. It's just the at the beginning of exactly, perhaps exactly. becoming global. You're going to hear about that. We have some okay. cool partnerships coming up. I think you're going to be taken over right now. No. <laughs> 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 OK, thank you. Very interesting. Okay, Bjorn, um, and for you the question is, um, how much fuel and therefore emissions can consumers save by driving smarter? 
Um, uh, that's an interesting question, and, but let me first say that it's really interesting opportunity to be able to sit here and, and listen to these guys, yeah, introduce yeah. their product, and also the possibility of Sharing. working together, I mean, just emerging here on the stage. Um, but yeah, so coming to your question, um, we launched our first version of, of our IMAS system early yeah. last year, early 2022, and so far we have collected um, data applicable to your question uh, of around about 100,000 kilometers worth of, of operational data, which is like 50,000 nautical miles worth of operational data on boats. Um, and that data shows us um, that the fuel consumption is 15 on average per trip, 15 to 20 percent higher than it need be if the operator would get, um, uh, let's say, operational speed guidance um, for those trips. And this data that we have collected have been uh, first and foremost from commercial operators, search and rescue, and so on and so forth. So these are experienced operators. Yeah. Um, and we also see that, uh, and, and our system, which is uh, again coming to these guys here, it's a neural network, which is an onboard, so it continues to learn. And uh, so we see there is a great opportunity um, to reduce the fuel consumption and the operational cost, and of equal importance to reduce the CO2 emissions. And if I remember the, the numbers correctly, it's around about 2.7, 2.6 kilos of CO2 emissions for every liter of fuel that you manage to reduce. Um, and the, we have also seen that um, uh, if we provide the operators with the speed guidance, it's sometimes just a question of reducing the, the speed in specific conditions, just slightly, just by few nuts, uh, then you can actually achieve this, uh, this fuel consumption reduction. Um, however, we have also been uh, um, testing our, well, collecting data like back home in Iceland. We put this on um, high-speed fishing vessels. That was the opposite, basically. It is a common consensus back home when you go out on, on these high, small high-speed fishing boats, after a successful day, you come a fully loaded boat back, they usually tend to go slow. But our research show that by increasing the speed in some of these cases, you actually reduce um, the fuel consumption. Okay. So it's depending on, on how you approach uh, the situation for each of these type of boats, the usage, the conditions, um, the experience of the operator. And as our system is collectively um, getting smarter and smarter, um, and with full respect, I mean, if you were less experienced than, than, um, than the other ones, I mean, our system would provide you with a better uh, support than maybe the other ones might need. Um, okay. So that's where we are. Um, so to answer your question, the short answer is between 15 and 20% on average. Less, yeah. With, that's, with, that's, yeah. That can and be safe. Would, I don't know how, how uh, your, your uh, software, but like, let's say if it says you need, if you would just go a little more like that, like change your course slightly, would it, and the waves will hit you differently. I don't know the, exactly the term, but would, does that technology do that? As yeah, well? so we are also okay. working on a, like a route planner. So if you, need, if you plan to go at 1500 today from A to B, so we have a better version being tested of a planner that tells you which way you should go given the conditions uh, on the way that there is the planned route. Which more efficient Yeah, route. so basically okay. uh, with the parameters either of safety or fuel efficiency. Okay. It depends on the usage of the boat. Uh, and again, referring to use cases in Iceland, you have a lot of tourists coming in, they go for whale watching, bird watching, and that is uh, first and foremost safety for the people on board, yeah. sitting from the stern up to the bow. Uh, and, and back home, uh, we have seen insurance companies stepping in and say, okay, if you operators use this system, this IMAS system from Hefinger Marine, then we offer you a discount on your premium. Okay. Because it gives total transparency as to how yeah. the vessel is being operated, by whom, and it supports, like I said, with full respect, less experienced operators. And, and uh, but, but so right now it's more, you're more using it in public service boats. Or is it also something for the private? Well, I mean, it's, um, it is in commercial now, right now uh, law enforcement yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. And we are also testing it uh, in partnership with uh, uh, a manufacturer of unmanned surface vessel, which basically means that if I'm sitting here, I'm operating a boat out there in the open water, the system, our system would tell me as the remote 
controller of that boat how fast I should be doing um, with that boat out there because the heifering system tells you the, the, the speed. Yeah, so it has been primarily um, uh, commercial, professional users, but we see a lot of opportunities um, yeah. for the recreational one. And, and also, in a sense, um, the, our solution is future-proof, if I, for the lack of a better word, because it optimizes the use of the energy source, being that petrol, being it diesel, or being it, for example, e-propulsion. Yeah. So it, when you buy an e-propulsion boat, you could just as well use our system to optimize uh, the battery charge at any given time. And just in general, like the sensors that that everyone is putting on the boats to do this, could you could those sensors be used for the same purpose? So, I mean, I mean, like could like could you just have like okay, let's just put sensors on all the boats and you plug in whatever technology you need. I mean, I think that uh, would that be a way to like work together? I don't know. I, I think it would be absolutely worthwhile looking into it because yeah. I mean, because what's the, the point of putting of like sensor? five different sensors on a vessel? It's like a, uh, I mean, the, I think the, the the future is connected. I mean, as the present, and so it has to be like a, um, in order to have an effect. I think all of us on a large scale, yeah. you need to be have a product a platform that is interconnected. That's a story of IT. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to ask. Would Th that's story are you already of putting IT. the sensor in without question right now? Yeah, Is but that's the story of, of IT because uh, no one can do everyone perfectly. So yeah. honestly, in IT, you have tons of solutions doing perfectly one thing. And if you look at solution, they always uh, partner, they always do API, they always uh, try to connect each other because you have someone doing something perfectly, but you won't be able, you, for instance, we won't be able to do what you're doing, what you're doing in our Synapse solution. So, that's the story of IT, and uh, I, there is no reason we shouldn't do the same way. That so. you shouldn't be able to connect the information with each other. Oh, obviously, yeah. it depends on what you want to do with the data, because uh, we have a very good re regulation in EU, uh, and we are very focusing on the legal thing to be sure that we are not using data the wrong way. Yeah. But we can see it with, with all our dealers. They want us to be connected with, honestly, really busy, but at the moment with their CRM, with their, with their uh, invoicing solution. But the client, for them, it's exactly the same. They want the boat to be connected to other stuff. And, and, and for sports, for leisure, it's been the same thing. You know, the Apple app uh, for health is connecting with the Strava one. Uh, and it, uh, honestly, there's no way it's going to be different in the boating industry. I mean, if I may just add, I'm yeah. totally correct. And I mean, our solution is a software. Uh, we are not a hardware developer, so we, and, and we have, and we are in talks with companies that, where we would aim to use what is ever on board, okay. just adapting our software to whatever mm -hmm. um, hardware is on board. So that is achievable as well. So absolutely. Otherwise, it's a waste of... of did you want to add something? No, I, I, I want to say there's, there's need to have more collaboration uh, in the industry between the different players, uh, both in terms of uh, the young, I mean, the startups uh, in this industry, but also with the uh, more established companies because uh, startups can bring innovation, can bring much, uh, I mean, quite some speed uh, in terms of innovation. Uh, but the need to rely on uh, stronger and, and more long-term partners uh, to have access to, to some data, to some technologies and so on and so forth. So yeah. there's ne there is uh, some need for uh, much more integration. Yeah. Did you want to add something to yeah. that? Just uh, to say that uh, what we interested about, we talk, you talk about the future, future proof. We just uh, start to see how again the industry is revolutionized itself. So we have new kind of propulsion. We have new technologies that we will face, um, uh, and and we see that here in, in Boot as well. So the idea is that all these technology goes to the marinas, and the marinas need to now change their infrastructure, and they need to to you know readjust to that. And by understanding the fact, uh, the complexity of running a marina and uh, uh, the regulations behind each and every marina, which is local but operating on a global scale. Uh, obviously, as an industry, we need to first understand what is that industry without marinas, how we help marinas to digitize, become more sustainable, and how we can work together in order to bring the change, not just for ourselves, but for the future generations. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, Patrick, you have anything to add? No, I, I think <laughs> a lot of <laughs> has been said already. I mean, that we 
we, we learn, I think, quite a lot from the automotive sector that run a little bit faster than the marine industry has, has done until today. Um, if that is the connectivity and, and sensors and if that is fuel efficiency or um, also tracking, tracking a fleet, yeah. um, camera systems, if you think about Tesla, they, they rely solely on cameras um, to, to get a good knowledge what's happening around you. Yeah. And that will be the future to drive autonomously one day. And I think that's, that's going to be the future also on the recreational side, uh, no matter if that is motorboats or sailing boats, because there's still plenty to do on a boat next to driving, or at least to get an assistant to do the job. And just, uh, just in general, uh, what if a boater doesn't want those sensors because he wants privacy or, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, how do you deal with that? Who should answer? No, uh, depends on uh, new <laughs> boat or used boat. Used boat, uh, he, for used boat, if you want a retrofit package, you are buying it. So obviously he, he won that. Uh, we have, as I was saying, on GDPR, we have huge regulations. So in, I think it's exactly the same for you. Uh, the client at any time know if you want to share the data or not. So okay. he's the owner of the data. So if you want to disconnect the thing, you can disconnect the yeah. thing, but yeah. uh, there's no need for him to do it because he's the, the, the sole owners. But, you know, we, we now have uh, 5,000 boats equipped. We're going to have 10,000 at the end. The final customer, 97% of them are sharing the data with their dealers. Because they want to. Because they want the dealers to... to, to it's going to improve the relationship with the dealer, it's going to improve the relationship with the boat, and it's going to ease the maintenance process. So yeah. they want to share it it's with the dealer. It's in their advantage to share. Sorry? Yeah. It's, it, it's their advantage. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sorry. I, I <laughs> no, that's what I wanted yeah. to say. It's because you, you propose more value to the owner of the boat, yeah. uh, more services thanks to sharing this data. Yeah. So he has an interest to share this data with, with uh, I mean, uh, any service uh, that can bring some value. The most important is transparency. He needs to know that his data are going to be shared with a partner A, a partner B, yeah. and at some, time, at some point in time, if you want to terminate uh, that, he can do that. Yeah. That's the most important and part for me. So yesterday, we EU. had a guy on stage who is, um, was warning us that EU regulation, e exactly. in the we next are very two, three key. years, it might even be that you have to have this sensor and it has to be on, mm -hmm. so that if you would go over whatever consumption, you might get a fine or something. No. Um, I mean, it, it sounds kind of, but it seems to be the future. I wouldn't say that they, they will have to do it, but uh, they are protected Yeah, exactly. by the EU regulation. And when, when you look at the, the car industry, for example, all the cars today, or the new cars, are connected. People yeah. do not know it, but all the new cars are connected. Yeah. Uh, and you have the possibility to disconnect it, but uh, then you enter... Uh, uh, then you do not benefit from all the services from the car manufacturer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's always the thing we are saying that uh, we, are, we are late behind in the, in the nautical industry. It's not true anymore. Uh, I launched my, my first company in the nautical industry 10 years ago. There was nothing to book a boat online. There was nothing to... <laughs> <laughs> nothing was uh, digitalized. Yeah. And in 10 years, the, 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 the past it's has been, been a huge surge. We, yeah. we benefit the fact that, as you were saying, Patrick, the, in, in, the, in the automotive industry, we, c we have lots of examples we can use. The, the, the final customer are already using tons of app, and, and, and it's more the customer who's pushing to, to, to get faster on digitization. So than, that's uh, a good sign, too. So we're not late. Okay. If I may Any to last, add about... Uh, so we're just going to wrap it up? But just about the data collection. It's a part of the smart... Uh, what is smart all about? So it's yeah. uh, um, uh, like a, a, a safe way to collect data and the interconnectivity among the data. So we are not different from any other industry that needs to collect the data in yeah. a safe way. And we, what are we if we are not collecting the data? We cannot understand the projections and we cannot understand the exactly. impact of what we do. Yeah. Well, I really hope that, you're, um, that, that you also get some European marinas using it and that we get some kind of, um, yeah, like a, something that's for everybody yeah. and that people can share information because information is knowledge. And then again, so yeah, thank you so much. And I hope you guys all exchange business cards and <laughs> do something amazing for us. <laughs>
All right, big hand for our panelists.